What's going on guys, CK Media here. What are the factors that you think that may lead a wife to be cheating her husband in her own husband's house while the husband is out there in his office hustling to make life comfortable for them? Let me tell you guys why I ask this question. This couple got married two years ago. The husband is 44, the wife is 33 or 34, about 10 years younger than the husband. They built their house a year ago and they are the first people to move into that house. They live with the husband's nephew, a little boy, and their own daughter. Two years old marriage, you know, just check how old the, the baby will be. So it happened that their toilet stopped working, they couldn't flush the toilet. The man is always in his office, a car dealer, and he also deals in spare parts. So they called a plumber. When the plumber came and opened the chamber, he discovered that condoms blocked the toilet. That was why they couldn't flush. So he brought all of them out, 23 condoms. He called the husband, showed the husband what blocked his toilet. And the man is asking, where did the condoms come from? Because they are the first people that moved into the house a year ago, one year old building. Where do you think these condoms come from? And the husband's nephew is claiming that the wife, the brother's wife introduced a guy to him as her cousin who comes to the house often. What do you guys think is going on in this marriage? The man is threatening to throw the wife out. So what I want to say is this, if you want to get married, well, probably the wife does not love her husband. That's why she brings her boyfriend to the house, you know, to sleep with him. So what I want to say is if you don't love somebody, there is no point getting married to that person. If you are a man, don't marry out of pity. If you are a woman, don't marry out of pity. Marry because of love. Marry because you think you can spend the rest of your life with the person. Marry because you value, you cherish, you adore, you acknowledge the person's personality as someone that you want to spend the rest of your life with. You guys saw a viral video recently where a young man with his white native was rolling in the mud, muddy water because a lady rejected his proposal. And after spending money training the lady according to the guy, Finally, she rejected his proposal because she knows she can't stay with him because she knows she does not have feelings for him. So it's better you go for someone that you love than someone you're going into that relationship out of pity. So this brings me down to Prophet Sylvester Ofori of Floodgates of Heaven Ministries in the United States, a Ghanaian pastor. A Ghanaian pastor who has close to 100,000 followers on social media. A man who has been preaching in a physical church. A man who claims to be prophesying to people, healing and performing miracles. But at the end of the day, what did he do? He took the life of his wife. Why? Because they've been in an abusive relationship. Because they have violence between them. Because they could not stay together. Because this man could not contain the anger in him. You know, for someone to threaten the wife before the brother, that if he does not take her life, that means he's a fake prophet. Then tell me, what has this guy been teaching his congregation? What has he been telling the people that attend his physical church? What has he been saying to those that he claims to be prophesying to? What has he been telling the people that he preaches to on Facebook? What has he been telling God? When he calls the name of God, what does he tell God? If you have that kind of anger, that kind of thought within you, if you have that kind of feelings to take someone's life, do you still call yourself a man of God? If you can threaten somebody that you're going to take the person's life and you still call God's name, what makes you a servant of God? You know, the end of a relationship does not mean the end of someone's life. If relationship ends, life continues. That's one thing people need to understand. If your relationship ends today, you can mourn, you can feel bad for a few days. You move on. You find somebody that will cherish you. Find someone that will love you. Find someone that will accept you. You can even find someone that will accept you because of whom you are, not because of what you are. So if the wife or the husband says, I'm done, I can't continue like this, why not let go? They've been separated for three months. They are in the process of divorce. So why take the wife's life? and you call yourself a prophet. You call yourself a prophet, Prophet Sylvester Ofori. Now he's going to prophesy in the prison. Maybe he'll spend the rest of his life in prison. That means he will become a preacher, a prophet in the prison. 
So if it's not working, it's not working. It's not the end of someone's life. It's not, if it's not working, you let go and continue with your life. And since we are still on pastors, Daddy Freeze has apologized to Bishop David Oyedepo. All through last week, the internet was on fire because of Daddy Freeze, Bishop David Oyedepo, and the pastor David Ibiomi of Salvation Ministries. And Dr. Paul Eneche contributed to the issue. You know, lots of videos are online, lots of people are breaking down many theories. Some are even predicting why Pastor David Ibiomi spoke to Daddy Freeze the way he did. But I made my own video, lots of comments, lots of questions, bashing, stuff like that. But finally, Daddy Freeze has apologized to Bishop David Oyedepo. Daddy Freeze, being the leader of the free nation in Christ, you know, has apologized sincerely to Bishop David Oyedepo of Winners Chapel. Daddy Freeze now uses scriptural approach and not confrontational approach like he used to do three years ago. And I also said this in my video that Daddy Freeze is now a grown man more than he is three years ago. More than the time he made that video that people are complaining, talking about, asking, have you seen this link? Have you seen this video? Go and check it out. So Daddy Freeze himself said, this time around, what he uses is scriptural approach. So we need to understand that love is the ultimate. Peace is what we want. You know, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says, let's love one another. Let's love one another. He that loveth knoweth God. That's what the Bible says. He that loveth knoweth God. You know, Daddy Freeze has criticized so many people, including Apostle Suleiman. But today, they still discuss the scripture. Today, Apostle Suleiman and the Defries can come together, talk about the Bible, talk about the scripture, talk about so many things. But it does not mean that they agree all the time. It does not mean that they fight all the time. It does not mean that Apostle Suleiman can still not tell that the Defries you're going wrong. Or that the Defries cannot say, Apostle Suleiman, you're not getting it here. It's, this is just how it is. So if someone criticizes you, it's for correction. It's not that maybe that person is crucifying you. So that the freeze and Apostle Suleiman discuss the Bible, they agree, they disagree. And it's not all the time that we can agree on doctrines. We have different doctrines. We can disagree on doctrines, but what matters is we still stand together as brothers. We still stand together, you know, love ourselves. So that's where love matters. That's where understanding matters. I understand that sometimes individual differences come to play. Apostle Suleiman is different and different. That the freeze is different. You know, we have different views of things. You understand what I'm trying to say? So we may agree, we may disagree on doctrines. At the end of the day, what matters is that we still remain brothers. So Hebrew chapter 13 verse 1 says, let brotherly love continue. So let's brotherly love continue. What I want to say finally here is that Daddy Freeze has apologized to Bishop David Oyedepo. He has acknowledged that the video he made three years ago using confrontational approach is wrong. And he has apologized. The way Pastor David Ibiomio spoke to Daddy Freeze and his family, you guys know if it is right or wrong. The way Dr. Paul Enechen spoke to Daddy Freeze, you guys know if it is true or false. Apostle Suleiman also told that part of trying to bring Daddy Freeze to his side, to speak to Daddy Freeze, discuss with Daddy Freeze, talk about the scripture, talk about the Bible. You know, they agree, they disagree. So I will prefer these two pastors to use that approach. Maybe Daddy Freeze will become a big preacher in the near future. Nobody knows. God can use anybody. Some are saying that the Freeze is this, that the Freeze is that. God can use anybody. What was Paul when he was Saul? But who is Paul today? When you hear Apostle Paul, go through the history of Apostle Paul. Know what Paul was when he was Saul. So you need to understand that God has his plans. God can use anybody. It's not about if you have attended Bible school today, God can call you tomorrow to become a big pastor, a big preacher, a prophet, a G.O. anytime, any day. So they have to use the approach Apostle Suleiman used so that there will be peace, there will be love. All of us will stop bickering, stop murmuring, stop ranting. All these videos will stop. If this first time you're coming across our channel, we'll appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification, like our video, comment, tell us what you think, and also share our videos with your friends and family. I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.